Hey, what's up everybody? JC here with another live stream here on a Saturday evening. Uh, for you in the West Coast, I would guess it's Saturday afternoon. But thanks for uh, tuning in. I know it was kind of last minute, even though I did say I was probably going to be doing a live stream in yesterday's news video. But um, I didn't know if I was going to do it today or tomorrow. And honestly, I, I always, the reason why I don't publicize these things more in advance is just because I, I, I'm always afraid if I do that, then something's going to happen and, and, and something's going to come up and I'm not going to be able to get on. But again, thanks for everybody who is tuning in today. And it's going to be kind of a laid back live stream. Um, just talking some toys, a uh, little bit of news I wanted to share with you guys, but, and I also have a few boxes over here that I wanted to open up, um, show you what's inside as well, but mostly, you know, it's going to be about an hour or so, and we're just going to talk Marvel Legends, some G.I. Joe Classified, uh, Transformers, uh, some Mafex, uh, we, we finally got our first look at the Mafex uh, Homelander figure from the boys Amazon series last night. Uh, uh, there was a, a virtual event being held over in Tokyo and they had the figure on display for that. So Salome is also here uh, joining us as always. So we'll see what kind of trouble she gets in uh, over the course of the next hour. So let's see. Hey, Steven, what's up? Adam, welcome to the live chat, or live stream. Cass, good to see you, man. Bubbles Toy Box, how's it going? Carlos, Preston, what's up? Eagle One, so it looks like we got some people in the house. So let's uh, let's go on and uh, I guess take a look at that Mafex uh, figure that, for you guys who haven't seen it. Now, I'd be interested to know how many of you guys out there have you seen the the series on Amazon, the boys series. Uh, there's also, you know, it's based on a comic book series, but I've actually never read the comic book series. Uh, but I've I've watched both seasons that have aired on Amazon, and I've enjoyed the the series, you know, the TV series overall. So uh, NECA is also doing figures based on this series. They're doing their own Homelander figure, which is seven inch scale, and then uh, we're getting this Mafex version. So so uh, I'm going to flip over here to uh, to my screen, and then we'll uh, take a look. Go here on TNI, and and take a look at the images here. Now, no details as far as when it's going to be released. I assume there's probably going to be more accessories than what we're seeing here. In fact, I really wouldn't be surprised if this is like an early prototype. I, I kind of hope so, because I, I, I do have to say that this figure is not as impressive as I was hoping it would uh, look. So head sculpt's not too bad, though. I'm not sure what's with the discoloration. I don't know if that's supposed to be like his heat beams are starting to come on or, or what, but uh, definitely uh, that's kind of a weird discoloration around his eyes. And then he's, he does have the cape, but the legs just look a little bit off as well. So I don't know. Um, like I said, I'm thinking this is maybe an early prototype. And you can go over to TNI if you want to get you know a better look. There's also a link to the actual virtual event, um, but you actually have to sign up for that if you want to uh, go check that out. And they had a bunch of other Mafex figures on display, but but nothing terribly new. There was also a Doctor Strange figure from Avengers Infinity War, uh, a Mafex uh, Doctor Strange that they're doing, which you can see up on Marvelous News. But um, this was the one I was personally most interested in seeing. You know, it was announced you know about a month ago that they were doing this figure. But I, I'm, I'm definitely kind of, after seeing this one, uh, more interested in seeing what NECA is going to come up with with their 7-inch scale version. So, uh, flip back. So, like I said, let's see. I uh, see we're getting some Star Wars questions here. Michael's asking, do I know if there will be a Black Series Boba Fett figure based on the appearance in Season 2 of The Mandalorian? Uh, I, I, I have not heard anything, but, um, if, if, if I was a betting man, um, most definitely I, I would say, yes, that's going to happen. Uh, I don't see it not happening. It's just a question of when, but, uh, but I've not heard anything specific at this time, um, 
for it. But like I said, there, there's no way that they're not going to do, do a figure of that. So I guess I should warn, um, you know, we're going to be talking some Mandalorian here. So some spoilers will probably uh, pop up. I, I don't know how many of you are completely caught up, but um, I'll try and warn you when we get into Mandalorian talk, but, but just be wary that, that spoilers might be coming out in this video. see tyrone i'll pass on the mafex homelander neca will hold me down yeah i mean neca is probably going to do at the very least as good a job and, and it will be cheaper so i mean it, granted the only disadvantage is if you wanted something to go with your marvel legends the mafex one's going to be more in scale than the neca one but but because neca is going to be seven inch but but NECA, I, you know, definitely eagerly anticipating what, what they come up with. And frankly, I'm surprised that, that we have not seen anything. I mean, it's been, they announced their, their Homelander figure uh, far before uh, the Mafex one was announced. So uh, definitely surprised that we have not yet seen, seen that figure. When I asked Randy on, on, on Twitter, like, like it, well over a month ago, um, you know, his response was they were uh, touching up the keep or something along the lines with the figure before they showed it. But, but you know, I, it's been long enough since then that I would think that that would have, have happened already. <laughs> Bean 2099, Bubba Cat. <laughs> dude had some moves. He, he may have packed on a few pounds, but, but dude had some moves. In fact, let's be honest. I think I, I think the character is more of a badass now than he ever was in in the movies. Tim Green, when will the next bat? When will the next Bad Batch figures be revealed? Uh, I I don't know when they will be revealed. Uh, probably we'll probably get something this month. Uh, Hasbro hasn't announced their next live stream for Star Wars yet, so um, but probably. Uh, sometime in that neighborhood, I would guess, but I, I don't have any uh, specific details on that. Gary Sabron says he hasn't started season two yet, waiting for the holidays off. No spoilers. I'll I'll try, Gary, but but uh, it's gonna be tough when we start talking Mandalorian. <laughs> Bean to <laughs> Blake. <laughs> Garrett's asking, do I think Haslab will make Galactus? If so, will it be bigger than the Sentinel? I think there's a good chance. I mean, I haven't heard any details on what, what next would happen for uh for uh for Haslab and Marvel, but but certainly Galactus seems like a, a good candidate for the next one. As far as being bigger, possibly, but I wouldn't say like humongously bigger. Um, in fact, where if I were Hasbro, instead of making him bigger, what I would hope to see is something along the lines of like his world devouring machine that you would see in the comics, including something elaborate like that to go along like a display piece to go along with him. That that's something I, I think would be really cool because you start getting so big with some of these figures. I mean, I know it's awesome to have in scale, but they just start really getting, you know, unmanageable. Like I I'm, I, I, I I'm kind of dreading when that Unicron transformer Unicron arrives just because trying to I, you know i can't imagine what it's going to be like trying to transform that thing i mean you know obviously scale wise it could certainly be bigger but but just handling wise and everything i i just if it was i, I just don't know how you'd hand, you know deal with it so i'd almost rather instead of them doing something even bigger than the sentinel would rather see them do you know they're not going to do a galactus that's in true scale with 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 six inch figures it's just i i don't think it's uh, feasible so instead of going bigger i'd rather see you know add-ons that are make it more elaborate and justifiable to be a haslab project if they end up doing galactus Yeah. <laughs> 
Stevens asked, do I think McFarlane will McFarlane ever do a Batman figure? I don't know, man. Uh, that I, It's almost hard to imagine him doing a Batman figure, right? But I, I, I got to be honest, if, if we're going to get Batman figures, I, I mean, I... I'm sure there's an audience for like a lot of the metal stuff and the last night stuff and all that. But I, I you know, the reveal that kind of leaked out this week with the Batman Beyond figure, that's a figure that I, I definitely am interested in, whether it's Batman or not, you know, and I would love to see like an old man, Bruce Wayne and his dog from Batman Beyond. So you know, if we're going to get Batman, let's do more mainstream Batman stuff than, than, than these one-off stories and, and such. I mean, again, I know there's an audience and the figures, you know, are right up McFarlane's alley and I'm sure a lot of people will dig it. But for me personally, you know, if we're going to do Batman, uh, you know, nightfall Batman, you know, nightfall Batman line, that's something I definitely would love. But, uh, Blake says Mezco Galactus 18 inches. Well, I don't know. I don't see Mezco being able to pull something like that off. I mean, they tried to do that uh, 112 scale Batmobile uh, years ago uh, from the movie, and that never materialized. So um, I think it would be hard for Mezco to do something like that. Impossible Pie. Do I do I think Hasbro knew in advance? Uh, I don't know quite possible they didn't but uh you know the studio i think a lot of times keeps stuff secret from the toy companies just because they know there's a greater chance of stuff leaking out when when uh i mean that's why uh baby yoda rogu uh, okay i mean yeah baby yoda the child uh that that is uh that's why they kept that a secret and toy companies in, in such, you know, didn't have access to that character until it was actually revealed on screen. So, um, that's why a product for, for that character was late getting to shelves, even though, you know, there is more than enough, uh, baby Yoda product out there now. Uh, <laughs> in fact, uh, you might say a little bit overkill, but, but, you know, when something's deemed popular, you know, they're going to milk it for all it's worth. Tyrone, the metal stuff was awesome, and I hope he tackles some Blackest Night stuff. Blackest Night would be cool. I mean, that's getting kind of into Green Lantern and, and such. Not Batman, even though, I mean, obviously Batman did have a role in that. But, uh, I mean, there's a lot of storylines that, you know, outside of Batman that I wouldn't mind seeing McFarlane tackle for DC Comics, but you know, it's just a question of will McFarlane ever get off his Batman kick? You know, was this first year of McFarlane toys the year of the bat, and then next year we'll get some, you know, a lot more other stuff? I, you know, I don't know. We're, we're gonna have to wait and see, but so far, you know, all indications are it's Batman full stream when it, when it comes to the DC multiverse. All right, so I, I want to open up. I've got some packages here. So this one is a. Uh, I'm gonna put Salome down here. Set her over here. This one is from Hasbro Pulse. It's a recent purchase, just this past week. Um, it is. Well, let me open it. I, I won't ruin this. I know it's inside, but I won't ruin the surprise for you guys. It is. It's Star Wars related. It's actually arrived fast because I just ordered it. This I think it was this week, early this week, and it arrived uh, the other day. So, some stuff from Hasbro Pulse is really slow, and then other stuff seems to be really fast. But so it's the exclusive version of the armor. So I really wanted the exclusive version just because I really like the fur. Uh, I'm sure you guys have seen this figure already, but I really like the real fur uh, collar piece that they used on this exclusive version. I'm not, you know, the ex extra accessories, not that big a deal. And I know the fur piece is kind of a small thing, but 
but that's really why I wanted uh, this version over the regular release version. So I missed out when it originally went up for on Hasbro Pulse. I think uh, it was during an event and I was covering it, one of their live streams, and I was covering it. And so by the time I got around to it, it was already sold out, which kind of pissed me off. But they finally put it back up this past week. And originally, like initially, like Stephen Brent, thanks, man. Gas money for the toy run. Appreciate it, man. Really do. But anyway, uh, so I missed it out on the first time, but then I, I saw them uh, publicizing, I think it was Memorial Day, maybe it was Memorial Day, when uh, they're, they were doing like a back-in-stock sale, and uh, and they promoted, uh, showed this figure. And so I was watching, and when they initially did it, um, like I went over and it was like, you had to be a premium member. And I was like, I'm not paying 50 bucks to buy a, a $35 figure. So I waited like 15, 20 minutes and they finally made it available to everybody. And I was able to snag one. They didn't last long, but, um, I was able to snag one. So definitely happy that I was able to get that one. Um, generally I'll just go with the regular releases for that type of thing. But I, like I said, I just really was digging the, um, fur actual fur piece than, than, uh, than, uh, the plastic that they use on the regular release. And while we're in the subject of, actually it wasn't Memorial Day, sorry, Black Friday, I guess, is or Cyber Monday, one of those uh, uh, things, but right after Thanksgiving. And I hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Um, it, it was a pretty busy time for me, good busy. Um, was getting a lot of projects around the house done that, that have been needing done. Uh, we installed new uh, faucets in, in our bathroom sinks and the kitchen sink that had been leaking. So a little bit of doing it yourself home projects, which is why I didn't get a live stream up last week um, like I was hoping to. But uh, uh, things, you know, with Thanksgiving over and everything, hopefully this coming week we'll be uh, back to more back to a normal schedule. My wife took off for... Uh, two weeks here around Thanksgiving break. She's been working from home due to the pandemic, but, but, you know, still when you work at home, it's still work. But I hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, had a safe Thanksgiving. If you decided to try and travel or you had people come to your house, um, you know, I, I hope everyone was safe. Uh, you know, you watch the news and it's, nothing but pandemic 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 which uh, believe me when i say I, I take it very seriously but but uh just you know it gets a little tiring at, at times I, though you know do wear your mask when you go out and all that jazz um again i'm not i'm not saying the pandemic's not serious it's just that when you watch the news you feel like it's the end of the world sometimes so but i i, I do hope everyone had a safe and, and good thanksgiving Exelius, if I pronounce that right. Good evening to you. Blake, about five videos ago, you had a Hasbro package behind you that you were going to open. Did you do? Oh, yeah. So that was Transformers uh, Kingdom stuff. So I actually have a couple of them here. So I've been doing reviews. Um, you know, I've been uh, doing reviews. So Hasbro uh, sent me a box of the first wave of Kingdom stuff. Actually, they did right before Thanksgiving. They did this virtual thing where they had some people in the media, and and last year they did it at New York Toy or New York Comic Con, where like they brought us in and they had us open up some product, and then we gave them like our responses to it and stuff. So this year they did it virtually. So they sent me the box of stuff and 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 we did that and then i've been reviewing it so i've hopefully you've checked them out transformer reviews you know are, are some of the hardest reviews to do just because you got to do the transformations on 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 camera and and that can be time consuming at least for me i'm not an expert transformer transformer but uh Hopefully you've been enjoying those reviews and, and the wave is, is pretty solid overall, you know, some faults here and there, but, but like, this is the new, uh, Cyclonus, which I think is actually pretty good. I would have liked maybe a little bit darker purple on him, but overall, you know, I think this is one of the nicer, uh, you know, Cyclonuses that they've done here recently. 
very uh, seems to be very screen accurate, you know, from the original G1 cartoon and everything. And then, and I've said talked about this before. I've never personally been a huge Beast Wars collector. Um, you know, I, I watched the original cartoon finally, you know, when it came out on DVD, but I did not watch it when it originally aired on TV. So I really never got into the Beast Wars toys, and I've only watched the cartoon like once. The full, uh, you know, the whole, you know, I kind of ran. Ben's watched it, the whole thing, and I thought it was really good. It ended up ended up being really good, and I I, I liked how they tied it into like the G1 lore and everything. So um, you know, even had things like Starscream's ghost in it and everything. So I, I really like that, but but I just never got into the toys for whatever reason. But I, I got to say that the Beast War stuff in this Kingdom line is really for the most part. Again, if you have, if you saw my Megatron review. I had some nitpicks about his his dinosaur mood and 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 Optimus Primal. I wasn't thrilled with his leg articulation and his ape mood, but but overall, just the detailing on on these is really nice. Um, this is the Black Arachnia figure, which is probably uh, one of my favorite in the line, and just like the articulation on on in his robot mode in a robot mode is just really nice. Um, you get some really nice movement and everything. So I am going to be doing a full-on review of this figure probably this week. So hopefully you will check that out. And then uh, here's the the cheetah figure. So definitely, uh, but but that's what was in the box was was a bunch of Transformer Kingdom stuff. And speaking of which, I've got another box. This one arrived just uh, yesterday or yeah yesterday was friday yeah so this arrived yesterday and i actually was not expecting this one i knew they were sending i knew hasbro was sending me the kingdom box but this one uh you know the transformer brand showing me some love i guess so i opened the outer box already but i haven't opened this inner box yet i thought i'd wait but this is War for Cybertron stuff. I think this is Earthrise stuff, not Kingdom. But you always get the cool boxes with these things. Give you a look inside there. So what do we got? All right, sweet. So the Quintesson, this is one I've really been wanting to get. Actually, I got the San Diego, or not San Diego, but PulseCon one with with uh, Quint that has the Quintesson in it. I ended up buying that on, on the Hasbro. And that's the out of the all the PulseCon exclusives that I, I purchased, that's the only one that's shown up so far. But I didn't, when I got it, I, because of the packaging and how it's made to look like the actual, you know, courtroom in the transform the Quintesson courtroom uh, in the in the movie, I didn't want to open it. So uh, I'm I'm psyched that they sent me this one. I don't know if I'll review it just because this figure's been out for a while, and I know there's a ton of reviews of it out there already. But definitely going to open this one up and play with it. Trailbreaker and Runamuck are tight in that wave. Here's Trailbreaker, and definitely uh, looks almost identical to how I remember the original G1 toy. Trailbreaker never gets much respect. He's one of those that you know you barely kind of remember from the G1 cartoon. He really didn't uh, appear that much in the in, in many of the episodes. Run amok. So the. the I remember, I still have it, uh, these guys I think first appeared in the comics, uh, the Marvel comic run of Transformers. I remember the cover with them and everything. So that's what I remember these guys most from is, is the comic book series. So that definitely, I never had, it was actually one of the original G1 toys that I did not have. So um, looking forward to looking at this one. And it looks very much like he did, you know, in the comics and everything. I think he ended up, if I remember correctly, he did end up showing up in that Headmaster series. If, if I remember, correct me if I'm wrong, but but I want to say, or actually, I, I take that back because I remember it was a season three episode 
there were some season three episodes because I remember I think the Starscream Ghost episode where where they were where Starscream was breaking into Trypticon. I think they were in that episode. Smoke screen. Megatron. So this looks very similar to the Megatron I already have. But still pretty cool. And then uh, one of the new guys. Which one is this? Ah, there we go. Fast Track. Uh, I've seen this one on shelves. So big thanks to Hasbro for sending me this. Um, like I said, I don't know if I'll review these since they, they've been out for a little while. Oh, Sunstreaker. Another cool one. I always loved the original G1 toy. It was one of my favorites. Just because the Lamborghini was always so cool. And he was it was like it was like you would have thought, and I know this is because this goes back to the die clone stuff, but you would have thought you know, being that Sunstreaker and Sideswiper brothers, they're both Lamborghinis. You would have thought they, like we often see, would see them do, they would just take the same mold and repaint it. But, you know, I always thought it was cool that Sideswipe and, and Sunstreaker were actually different, different uh, robots. And I think, I, I got to say, I like, Sunstreaker, I like the red on Sunstreaker better than Sun, or I like the red on Sideswipes. Uh, you know, I like his red colors better than the yellow on Sunstreaker. But I think Sunstreaker was the cooler looking of as far as the actual robot designs and everything. Uh, let's see. Marv Mad says a lot of people like Trailbreaker, me included, for such a minor character still have the G1 version. Yeah, and the G1 toy was really cool. Um, you know, it had, if I remember correctly, it had actual die cast metal on it. Um, so, but I, like, I can only remember, like, I remember he was in the, uh, the pilot three episode, you know, the three part pilot of, of the cartoon. And I remember like, he, I think he, if I remember correctly, he came and he helped uh, Sunstreaker and and Sideswipe get away from Laserbeak, if, if I remember correctly. And he like in his his car mode, he shot like out of his exhaust port and knocked Laserbeak out of the sky. If... Omega Maximus misses Toys R Us. Yes, I think we all do, or at least a, a place to go that has nothing but action figures. Dragon Slot says, I think my Hasbro Marvel Legends Ghost Rider with motorcycle has arrived. I don't know. I've been working. I'm also waiting on Phage and, and Batman and Superman for a Build-A-Figure. Uh, assuming you're talking about the Cosmic Ghost Rider, I don't actually have that one. But definitely looks like a cool figure. I just... It wasn't a character I was interested enough, that so I, I just... I've been having to be a little more choosy just because, you know, there's so many things that are coming out these days and it's like, it's really hard to collect everything. Twenty three twenty three says, you can't go down the rabbit hole buying those G1 figures. <laughs> My wallet will start crying. Yeah, I understand. CO2 Geiger asks, who will get the rights for the new Robert Patterson Batman movie, McFarlane or Spin Master? Well, I mean, technically, they both will have the rights. Um, McFarlane will do, if they do decide to do any collector-oriented figures, which I assume they will, then that's they'll come from McFarlane. And then if they do a kid's line, which probably they will, um, that will, will be done by Spin Master. But, but it's not like a lot, you know, it's not like one movie goes here and another movie goes there. They the license is just broken up with a specific type of product that each company can do. T 
Tyrone says he just got a delay notice for Prowl Ironhide from Amazon. Hope I don't get hosed. Well, I, I guess it'll come eventually, but yeah, Amazon's been... I, I got a delay on Walmart. I, I had the Vintage Collection Incinerator Trooper uh, from The Mandalorian, and that one got delayed. I, I, I got the 6-inch version, but I haven't gotten the Vintage Collection version yet. But yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of delays off and on with, with product, and I think that's in large part due to COVID. But my guess is they'll get it filled for you eventually. And like I've been, I'm waiting to try and get that Target exclusive Mandalorian, uh, the Black Series Mandalorian. Um, I've missed it a couple times, but I'm pretty confident it'll come back in stock. Uh, but just waiting for that one. Uh, Dragon says he ordered the Ghost Rider from a few years back for over a hundred bucks from the secondary seller. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, that's a, that's a solid figure. Uh, I, I do have that one, so. Um, don't know if I'll say it's worth a hundred bucks, but but definitely it is a good solid figure. And I've like I have no idea what the secondary market price is. I just I don't know if I'd be able to plop down a hundred bucks for that figure, but but definitely it's it is a good figure. Michael Welch, Netflix Soundwave and Prime are arriving in stores now. Yeah, I saw, I think it was I want to say it was MCU collector posted a picture of the sound wave on, on Instagram and that's a really nice looking figure. So, um, that would be one that, I mean, I've got enough sound waves already that I don't know if I would get it, but that's one where I, like, if I happen to see it in the store, you know, it could be, you know, just, a you know, something I wouldn't plan on getting, but end up getting anyway. Omega Maximus asks, since we're getting an X-Men Transformer crossover toy, does that mean we're getting an X-Men comic book and cartoon? I doubt it. I mean, they've been, Hasbro's been doing a lot of crossovers with Transformers, Ghostbusters, and, and other properties, so I, I don't think that means anything other than... Uh, just they're doing the toy. However, Marvel is doing a, a mech. They are doing a mech comic. It's not Transformers, but but they are doing uh, you know superheroes in mech robot suits. Uh, you know the Marvel characters in mech suits. So it's very similar, um, but not actual Transformers. I mean, they did do a Transformer uh, Avengers comic. You know, several years ago. Actually, IDW is the one that really did it, but it was in conjunction with Marvel. Um, but but so there is a cross. If you if you want. Uh, an Avengers Transformer crossover. There is that series out there. It was with the new Avengers, uh, you know, back when that comic kind of first debuted. Am I hyped for the new Sentinel? I already ordered the wave. I, I'm definitely hyped for the HasLab Sentinel. I, I, I don't know about the Power of X wave, just because it's not a, st I haven't fully invested in that storyline. So, I mean, they look good, and I do like modern versions of characters. So, you know, definitely like even though like Cyclops, you know, is kind of a reuse of of previous Cyclopses. You know, I, I probably will end up, and I do in the Marvel Girl that that's one I'll probably definitely get. But like the white suit Magneto, I'm not as excited about. Um, even the Professor X, though, I was thinking about that figure with, with the new uh, second head sculpt that they revealed on Friday. My guess is that will fit on the classic Xavier as well, the one in the wheelchair. So I'm thinking that would be a good head sculpt to go along with that figure. John G says, Walmart and definitely delayed my sound wave prior. Sorry, dude. Uh, that sucks. I have not had Walmart completely cancel anything. I've had them delay. Um, I just finally got uh, one of the uh, Mandalorian figures, one of their exclusive figures, but it kept getting delayed week after week, but it did finally arrive. T 
Hilton says, Hey Jay, love your channel. Do you think Hasbro will ever release some Excalibur figures in the X-Men line? Yeah, I, I think Excalibur is definitely, I, I don't know when, I don't have any intel on Excalibur figures, but I definitely think Excalibur is, is, is a possibility. So, um, yes, yes, I think, uh, and I mean, technically we've got Nightcrawler and Captain Britain already, so... Freddie Max says, how can I pre-order the new MK Noob and Cabal figures? Well, I mean, eventually they'll be available everywhere, but they have not, they just showed them off this uh, past week, but um, probably, I probably usually it seems to take, you know, a couple weeks, maybe a month from when they debut it like that for when they go up for pre-order. So, uh, I mean, I don't think those figures are due out until next spring. So, you know, but they will be of it. They're not exclusives or anything as far as I know of. So, you know, once they do go up for pre-order, I don't think you'll have a problem getting your hands on them. Blake says he's only going to get the Miss Marvel, but I like the extra accessories. They all come with hands, head, Cyclops, blaster effects. Hope Hasbro keeps this up. Yeah, I mean, technically those Cyclops effects are the same ones that they included with the X-Factor version with the white stripes. But yeah, I mean, it's definitely cool to see those uh, those types of things. Now, I'm curious to know what you guys think of the MODOK figure. Um, I've got the Toy Biz one here, which is still, you know, this is a great figure. It holds up, you know, with the modern figures. So, you know... That Hasbro Marvel Legend one that they just announced, you know, with the fifty dollar price tag, I'm curious to know how many of you guys are are uh, are you excited for it? Are you kind of on the fence because of the price? Got Amazon sale Nimrod. They they send it bare though with no packaging. Jerks. <laughs> wow, I've never seen them do that, but. At least you got the discount. And if you got the figures, then frankly, unless you're somebody who keeps your stuff in the package, I say, who cares? Just going to end up in the trash. Hey, Patrick, what's up? Xavier says, Modoc looks great, but not $50 great. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of, I mean... Especially since I don't, ha I haven't had it in hand or anything. I don't want to sit here and say, "Oh yeah, it's definitely not worth fifty bucks." But you know, especially like when you look at the Toy Biz one, and other than like the the Hasbro one has the extra new faceplate, you know, where you can take the faceplate out and put the alternate one in. I don't see a whole lot of difference, uh, but between the two, um, to be absolutely honest. In fact, you know. Even though the Hasbro one looks good, I mean, I don't know how well it's coming up on camera, but the detail on this Toy Biz one is just fantastic. So, and you got the same kind of blast effect that comes out of the bottom. You got the little joysticky thing. He's even got, this one's got articulated hands. So, that's one where it's cool. And if you don't have the Toy Biz one, um, you know, definitely I think it's going to have more appeal for you. But if you've got the Toy Biz one, I, I don't know. I just, I, I would have to wait until I see it actually in hand or see some in hand reviews or something before I I made any kind of final decision. But but definitely with that $50 price tag, it, I'm not sure I, I would uh, get it with, with already having the Toy Biz one. Blake says, how much was the original MODOK? Well, the original MODOK was a Build-A-Figure, so... You know, and it just came in a standard wave. So, you know, whatever, you know, I forget how exactly how many figures were in the wave, but, you know, it was just a standard build of figure. So essentially you got it free if you bought all the figures in the wave. So, and I could, you know, I could definitely, see, you know, I, I easily $30. I mean, uh, I, but 50 to me is almost kind of pushing it. I would have almost rather they not included the extra faceplate, and and if if that would keep the price down to closer to 30. But Jay King says he has the Toy Biz one. 
Yeah, and I got, I mean, I got this one when it first came out, so, and it's held up well over the course of time, so, I mean, this is, this is a top-notch figure. This is really one of the best, I would say this is easily one of the best Marvel Legend figures that Toy Biz did back in the day. Could there be Marvel Legend figures for the Disney Plus Marvel shows? Michael asks. Well, yes, in fact, there are. We, we've talked about that before. And let's just say that based on what I've heard, we could be seeing something for that very soon. Cast 2323. Hard for me to pick up a favorite in Beast Wars. Or hard to pick a favorite in Beast Wars. I like so many characters. And I, I don't know if you've seen uh, the Wave 2 images. I talked about them on in Friday's news video. And they're up on T-Formers. But, but like that Dinobot figure in Wave 2. I mean, based on those images. I, th I think that's an awesome looking figure. Uh, near perfect. So... Um, and the air razor looked pretty good as well. And the Sentinel. I have the Toy Biz Sentinel too, though the leg always falls off on, on that one, <laughs> at least on mine. And, and to be honest, as good as the Toy Biz one is, for the, for the time, I actually like the Hasbro Marvel Universe one uh, better. I guess because it looks more like a classic Sentinel to me than the one that Toy Biz did. Preston asks, "Will there be more Inhumans from Hasbro?" I have not heard anything from more Inhumans. So, but I mean, certainly I think it's possible and we know Walgreens, you know, the Walgreens figures this year are going to have a cosmic theme. So you might see, I could see some Inhumans maybe popping up there again. Um, but I haven't heard anything specific for Inhumans. Adam's picking on typos. I'm the last person to pick on people with typos because I've had my share. <laughs> I'd be Cass would be tempted to get a ha Haslab Blackbird for the X Men. If I had the space and it it was really nicely detailed inside and could like hold all the X Men, I could be tempted. But space, that's one of those where a vehicle like that where, you know, you can put figures inside, but once you close them up inside, you can't really see the figure. So it's not really a good display piece for figures. And so then it comes to, you know, can you really find the space for it? That's why when you do things really big like that, I like it when it's more like a playset type deal where you can like display a lot of figures on it. I mean, the Sentinel's an actual figure in its own right, so it's a little different, but... And that, I mean, that's just my personal opinion on that kind of thing. What's up, Henry? Lord Vengar wants a real Drax. I assume you mean like a comic book classic Drax. Yeah, I would love to see that too. And I, that could be another one that maybe we could see in the Walgreens line. You know, they did the thing for Walgreens initially. So, you know, who knows? Now, I want to talk a little bit about one of the clues that Hasbro gave yesterday for an upcoming figure, the one with the tail. So I talked about this a little bit in uh, yesterday's news video, but I'm still thinking that that's going to be a new Tigra figure. So you know, if you caught the live stream a few weeks ago when I was talking about thinking about trying to get this figure so I could round out my West Coast Avengers, I did end up breaking down and buying one off eBay. I think I spent like 50 bucks for it. So just for that reason alone, I think Hasbro is going to 
give us a new one with the tail. Now, you know, I, I've seen people saying like Wolfsbane or Feral. So Wolfbane, I, I think, is a possibility, but I think it's going to be based on how they said it in the video. Um, they said it was a new sculpted figure. They didn't say it was a new figure or a new character. And normally when, when they say use the words new sculpted, that means that it's going to be a figure that they've done previously and they're just updating the sculpt. So we've never gotten a feral figure before, so I don't think it's going to be her. We have gotten Wolfsbane, you know, kind of with, uh, with the Walgreens exclusive version. But the thing is, is if you think about it, except for when she goes all wolf, Wolfbane does not generally have a tail. Um, so I'm not sure if she would actually qualify for that clue. I mean, I guess it depends on how specific. I mean, wolves obviously do have tails. And like I said, if she goes, you know, when she does occasionally go all wolf, then she has a tail. But when she's in her kind of wolf human form, she generally does not actually have a tail. So if they did a Wolfbane X Factor figure, I don't think she would actually have a tail. So I kind of feel like that kind of knocks her out of contention for that clue. Now, Fing Fang Foom is a character that has a tail that they've done before that possibly they could redo. Um, you know, we've got, as you've heard me probably talk about or read on Marvelous News, it looks like we've got an Iron Man wave coming out next year. So who knows? Um, if there's a Build-A-Figure in that wave, then then maybe. I, I, I don't know. But, uh, but still my money right now is on an updated tigra figure uh is what that that tail clue was referring referring to and again just mainly because i went and bought broke down and bought this one off ebay and paid more than i probably should have for it and the exact same thing happened uh, you know a year or so ago i got i had I had been holding off and holding off on getting the Jim Lee Jean Grey figure, the original one, because I missed on it, but I wanted to round out my Jim Lee X-Men team. And so I finally broke down and bought one off eBay, spending more money than I should. And literally like a week or so after Hasbro announced that new one that they did in that box set. No lie. So I don't know. I, I'm going to laugh my ass off if, if the end up, if it ends up being a new tiger and I, I'm going to start, I'm going to be like anyone who wants a specific figure redone, let me know, you know, maybe shoot me some money and I'll buy one on eBay and then, you know, Hasbro will, will, will do it. So, but we'll, we'll, we'll wait and see on that one. Yeah. Feral. Well, again, I definitely don't think it's going to be fair. Well, I mean, there could be a feral coming, but I don't think this clue was in regards to feral because feral would be a brand new figure. And I think if, if it was a brand new figure, I don't think they would have specifically used the words a newly sculpted figure. That generally means that it's a figure they've done before, but they've updated the sculpt. So I don't, I, I'm almost sure, unless they're just totally being misleading with their clues, I, I don't think it's feral. Wolfsbane, technically, I guess you could squeeze in there just because, you know, wolves do have tails, and if she goes all wolf, she has a tail. But if they do Wolfsbane, I don't think the actual figure would have a tail. You know, an X Factor, I mean, Let's be honest, there's going to be eventually an X-Force Feral figure, and there is going to be an X-Factor Wolfsbane figure. They've done all the other members of those teams. They're not going to leave those two out. But whether this clue is specifically in regards to that, I don't know. Yeah, patient. I know. And I, I said it, you know, I said it, I said it. it if I go and buy this, Hasbro's going to do it one. I, I just know it. But I, I, I was like, but then I was like, you know, Tiger's a, I mean, she's, I don't even really think she's used in the comics these days. So she's not like a major player. So I was like, you know, are they really going to do a new Tigra anytime soon? But, and honestly, this is not a bad figure. This ended up looking a lot better than I thought it was originally going to. So... I actually think this is a pretty solid figure overall. So I would actually be happy, you know, if this is the only Tigra, if I had to keep this Tigra. I mean, I wouldn't, if they do an updated one, it probably will look better. I'm not saying, you know, that they couldn't do a better looking one than this one, but overall, you know, I think it actually captured the likeness of the character pretty good with that one.
Mojo has a tail. Does he? I don't remember Mojo. Uh, I mean, he's got that big machine with the legs. But I don't remember him having an actual tail. Everett asks, will we get a comic book version of the Blackwater? I don't know. I mean, anything's possible, and I certainly haven't heard anything. But I don't know if, if we would see comic book versions of Black Order anytime soon. Now, um, people are starting to get their hands on that, that, that Amazon set. So if you pre-ordered that one, it, if it hasn't already, it's probably going to be showing up in your mailbox pretty soon. And I don't know if you've seen like images, people have been posting images of that set and it looks really good, but I just, I couldn't bring myself to spend the money to buy all figures that I already have, even though I, you know, admittedly all the figures in the box set look much better or at least decently better than, than their original versions. But I just, I just, it, it's hard to justify buying all the same figures again. So if it goes on discount on Amazon, that box set, the, the, Children of Thanos box says what I'm talking about. If that goes on discount, I'll probably get it. But right now, I just don't think I can spend full price on it. Michael asks, will there be DC Multiverse figures of the new Suicide Squad movie? Probably. Um, I mean, I think it's safe to say that any major DC movie that comes out, there will be some figures. Will they do the entire Suicide Squad? I don't know. But definitely, I mean, like, will we see Harley Quinn? Probably. Especially since they never released the one based on the Harley Quinn movie. Um, you know, but, but definitely I think it's safe to say that any... D major DC movie that comes out, there will be some figures from McFarlane backing it up. Um, it, my, while I can't say this 100%, there's probably something in the contract that says you've got to do movie-based figures when the movie comes out. Now, obviously, things have not been normal with the pandemic and all these movies being delayed. And of course, I don't know if you've heard the announcement, but Warner Brothers basically announced that all their movies, you know, while we'll get theater releases, will also be going straight to HBO Max, essentially. So you don't actually have to go to the theater to watch them now. So that that's kind of an interesting twist on things. But yes, I, I think there'll probably be at least some Suicide Squad figures. Yeah, says thanks for the Beast Wars figure reviews. Thanks for watching, man. The Optimus Primal has got a lot of views. It's over ten thousand. Um, the other is not as much. Uh, you guys weren't digging the Warpath review. It's gotten less than two thousand, which actually I think is one of the cooler figures. But then I lean more towards the G1 stuff than. But I, I am going to do some more Transformer reviews this week, so. And I, I'm, I'm going to start doing more reviews. Now, it's not going to—I'm not going to be one of those guys who are getting the stuff first anymore. I, I just—I don't have the money to do that. But I am going to start doing more reviews. You know, like I kind of have been. And speaking of which, I got this thing out of curiosity. And we'll be doing a review this week. So, and I got, I haven't opened this and I got to think that this box is maybe a little overkill, though so maybe it's not, I don't know, but this is from, uh, the Disney store. I don't know what I did with my scissors. This humongous box <laughs> out of the way. So this is part of the Disney toy box line, but it's 
Iron Man's Hall of Armor. So I'm really curious to see how these are going to scale with Marvel Legends. And I've seen a few people post some images and they actually look like they they do actually kind of scale. So, but I am going to do a review of this this week, hopefully. So hopefully you'll check that out. And even if you're not really into the toy box figures, which are, you know, about five inches, five inch type figures, you know, you, it might be something for, you know, cool to display with your Iron Man figures. And I will tell you that there are a fair amount of Iron Man figures coming next year. So you're going to have multiple opportunities to uh, get Iron Man to, you know, if, if this in fact uh, scales well with Marvel Legends. J Blue 68 says, just picked up the Hasbro Transformers Megatron today. Awesome piece, although it's been out for a while. Which, which one? The Earthrise? The, um, they've, they've been doing a lot of Megatrons. J King says, would work for a Hall of Armor. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that's really what I wanted to see is how well this work is like a Marvel Legend Hall of Armor. I, I think it's a cool, I, you know, as far as play sets go, I think it's a cool idea. So, I actually do some pretty cool things with this toy box line, which is a Disney Store exclusive. You know, the figures themselves, you know, I mean, they're geared more for the kids, but I actually think they do some pretty cool things with this line. And I've seen some pictures of people where they bought multiples of these, and this thing costs about 30 bucks. So it's not super hugely expensive, but you know, they've gotten a couple of different ones. So, am I going to reveal the Iron Man wave? Caesar S. Well, I, I'm not going to reveal it as in I don't even have images, but if you mean, am I going to tell you all the figures? Not today. I'm still trying to pin down at least two of them, but, but, uh, if you caught my story on Marvelous News, I'll tell you there's, is, is from what I know, and, you know, this has not been officially confirmed by Hasbro, so this is based on intel that I've gotten, but so far my intel has been pretty solid. You know, I told you guys about the X-Men wave. I told you about the MODOK figure being a deluxe figure. So uh, I've been pretty, uh, my intel has been pretty uh, dead on so far. But um, I'll tell you the Iron Man wave, from what I know of, has seven regular figures in it. I, I don't know what the build a figure is. I'm pretty sure I, I'm about I would say 90% sure it, it it's a regular wave of figures. It's not like a retro wave, but I won't swear to it 100%. Um, but I've seen no indication that it's a retro wave, and it does have seven figures. I think usually the retro waves have about six figures in them. So, but I don't know what the build a figure. Assuming there is a build a figure, I don't know what the build a figure is in the wave. And there, it, it, I'm pretty sure it's all comic book based figures. It's there's not any movie figures. I don't think I don't think any of them are movie figures. And but I will also tell you that for those of you into the movie stuff, there is movie stuff coming next year. So and not just the new movies, but but older movies. So um, again, based on intel I've seen. But I want to get I want to make sure I have hammer down all all seven figures ultron being one and damn dude blake 300 bucks christmas damn uh i i feel guilty because oh you've donated so much to this channel and i really do appreciate it but man i, I i'm not worthy man I, I really not but thank you very much and i'm gonna I'm going to be doing a contest here. We're going to do another trivia contest sometime this month uh, where I'm going to give back a hundred bucks to one of you guys, you know, for Christmas. And we also, just while we're talking contests and ways to win stuff, we do have just launched two new contests, one on TNI and one on Marvelous News, giving away hundred dollar store credits to Big Bad Toy Store. 
But Blake, I really, dude. I I really hope Blake's like a millionaire because he's donated so much money to the channel. It's it's. But anyway, going back to so they're I'm pretty sure they're all uh, comic book based figures, and there, there's there's gonna be. I'll, I'll tell you this, and I haven't revealed this anywhere else. So this is there's at least there's at least three different Iron Man figures in the wave. So that's why I said, you know, you you might need a Hall of Armor with all the Iron Man figures that are coming this year. And and let's not forget that there's a rumored Iron Man figure in the Shang Chi wave that's coming out next year, which I believe is going to be comic book based. Though I don't have any details, specific details on that one, other than there's going to be an Iron Man figure in that wave. But I don't know what which Iron Man. But um, a lot of Iron Man stuff, it looks like, is going to be coming out next year. Like says, you don't have a, a Patreon, so it's all good. Yeah, I, I hate asking people for money who watch. So, I mean, I, I, I certainly appreciate it. And it, not saying I couldn't use it, but I just, I never feel worthy that, like, I'm, I don't consider myself any kind of celebrity. I'm just a guy giving you guys news. So, you know, I mean, I do this for a living, but I make the money from sponsors, you know, paid sponsors and stuff. So I'm, I'm not slanting anybody who does Patreon or ask for donations or anything like that. And obviously, I mean, you guys have the option of doing the super chat stuff. Um, but I just, I never feel worthy of. of you guys donating out of your pocket. So when you do, believe me when I say, especially Blake, who's just been way over generous, um, I, I really do appreciate it. Impossible Pie says, am I getting the Kickstarter spawn figure? I did not buy the Kickstarter spawn figure. I, I think it ended up looking pretty good. I, I saw Shardimus Prime's early review of that figure, and I think it looks pretty good, but... Honestly, I've never been a super huge Spawn fan, even though I do have all the original comics. Um, but I just, I, I never really collected the original toy line. And I have the Mortal Kombat Spawn figure, which I think is is a very nice figure. So, so uh, but, but no, I did not get the Kickstarter one. <laughs> like says, and that's why you deserve it. <laughs> Thanks, man. I, I do appreciate it. Now, it, if you guys are in a generous mood of donating, let me just bring se segue into this. You know, with Christmas almost upon us, one of my favorite organizations is Toys for Tots. So, Please, if you haven't already, consider donating to them, either money or, you know, buying a toy and, and finding a local drop-off spot. Uh, I th think Five Below, which is a chain, is, has drop-offs. I mean, a lot of local businesses do uh, Toys for Tots drop-offs, but like as a chain, I mean, Toys R Us used to be the main place to go to do Toys for Tots drop-offs, but obviously they're not around anymore. But um, you know, especially this year with everything that's been going on, the pandemic and everything, I think, you know, Toys for Tots, you know, which is put on by the U.S. Marine Corps, um, needs needs all of our support more than ever. So uh, definitely, if, if if you're looking to donate, that's where I, I say put your money, put your toys, because um, I, I, I'm pretty sure they could use use all of our help more than ever. Everett says they should re-release the Wrecking Crew as a box set. I mean, they did the Wrecking Crew not too long ago, but I mean, that would definitely be a cool box set, especially if you missed out on the original ones. MCU... Obadiah.
Hmm, Damien, that, that, that's an interesting one. JBlue68 says he donated at Five Below last weekend. Sweet, man. And you can go to the Toys for Tots. Just Google Toys for Tots. I think it's toysfortots.org, but but just Google Toys for Tots. And you can go to their website, and you can look up local donation spots. Like I said, a lot of businesses, fire fire departments often do have Toys for Tots dropout off points. Now, with the pandemic and everything, you know, I I, I don't know how that's affecting physical drop-off spots, but... But, uh, you know, definitely, and, or, you know, you can go to their website and just make a monetary donation. Uh, they can use the money to go out and buy the toys and stuff. Ever asked, will we ever get an updated modern God of Thunder with the chain mail? I'm not sure which version you're talking about, but I would love to see them do like, uh, the Thor when he wore like the armor uh, back in the, was it the late eighties or nineties, but before, before Thunderstrike, you know, his body started to deteriorate. I think, I think if I remember correctly, Hella put a curse on him or something. So every time he got injured, he didn't heal. And so he ended up having to wear this armor. So I would love to see a figure of that. Impossible Pie, why do you think Hasbro won't just come out and say it that O-Ring Joes won't be made and why? Well, I don't think any company likes to, you know, they never, they never will say never just because things often change, but, and I don't know actually if they've never, you know, I don't know what their official stance on O-ring figures are, but I suspect that just the tooling is no longer available to them. Um, you know, it's kind of an outdated way of doing figures. And I, I, so, but I don't think you'll ever see them say never to anything really, because then, then if they ever go back and decide to do something, then people will go, well, you said you were never going to do this or, you know, so, you know, generally toy companies are very hesitant to use the word never, but um, I don't see them bringing O-rings back. Um, and I think a large part, I think, is is because of, from what I've heard, and I, I won't say this is definitive, but that just the tooling for a lot of those old uh, figures and, and even some of the, in those vehicles and stuff just doesn't exist anymore. Speaking of G.I. Joe, um, just today uh, news came out that we are, in fact, according to Hasbro at least, are not going to be getting any kind of color change Zartan figure for the classified line. Um, you know, I, I've talked about this in the past where when they first announced the figure and, and put it up for pre-order, the, the solicitation text that they put out with the figure said that it was going to have color change ability, which ended up being an error. But it made many of us, including myself, wonder if there wasn't going to be like a second version done as maybe a store exclusive or what have you that did have color changeability. And apparently uh, Hasbro had a roundtable with some of the fan sites. Uh, I, I was not included in that, but but from what I'm told, uh, they somebody asked them if they were going to do Zartan, um, a color change Zartan for the classified line. And according to them, uh, no, they're not. And because apparently the tools, the plastic and stuff is not available to them. I'm not sure why, but, but, uh, that's what apparently they said. And then as far as why there was the text that said the figure was going to have it, they said, apparently somebody just took text from an old Zartan figure and, and used it for this new one. And I guess didn't look closely enough and, and see that that was a feature that was not actually applicable to the classified figure. So according to Hasbro, at least there is not going to be like a second Zartan released with color change ability, at least no time soon. Mm 
Damien asks, any news of a classified Serpentor? Just a little wish. Nothing I've heard. Um, but I, I, I'm with you. I wouldn't mind seeing a Serpentor. If they do Serpentor, they better do him with his air chariot, like a vehicle set. But I've not heard anything yet. I mean, keep in mind with the G.I. Joe classified. I mean, the thing, I mean, like the Flint and the Lady J, and I've talked about this before, you know, I mean, those figures are not coming out until like the middle of next year. The Wave 3 with, uh, with the Zartan and the Cobra Trooper and the redecos of the Scarlet and Roadblock, I mean, those aren't due out until like February or March of next year. So, you know, we really are ways off before getting our hands on any new G.I. Joe classified figures. And, and so, you know, right now, the only other figures that are rumored, you know, with strong, you know, being they've shown up in store computer listings and what have you are, besides the Lady J and the Flint, are Barbecue and Major Blood. So, which I think maybe will... They're either, those two, I think, are either going to be Target exclusives or they're going to be part of that, you know, the final two figures in, in the Wave 4. So, and hopefully the latter. I, I really hope those don't end up being Target exclusives. But, but again, you know, those aren't going to be out until the middle of next year. So, I don't really expect to hear much more on G.I. Joe, the G.I. Joe classified front. Um until probably you know february time frame of next year steven needs a classic storm shadow yeah i think we all do or i don't know if classic but at least uh more of a cobra like storm shadow as opposed to the arctic one that they did as the amazon exclusive i mean i i wouldn't mind you know i i, I was digging the look other than the maybe the big arm tattoo I, I was digging the look of the outfit they have him you know the of the new artwork that they did of him so i wouldn't mind seeing that version of him lord vengar have you heard any rumors of figs from Dungeons and Dragons cartoon? I have not. Um, the only Dungeons and Dragon figure I've heard about is that one that they they announced back during PulseCon, and even that was kind of a surprise. So I forget who told me this, but I think they're. I don't know. I mean, as far as the cartoon goes, I mean. I don't know. I, I, I got to be honest. I don't really see Hasbro doing cartoon figures of, of Dungeons and Dragons. Again, I'll never say never, but but I don't really see them doing that. And I think just because if you really think about that that cartoon, as far as '80s cartoons go, it, it's certainly. I mean, it had a, you know, it's got a following and a lot of people like, I mean, I liked it, but I, I don't think it was, you know, it's not in the same ballpark as say the GI Joe cartoon or Transformers or He-Man or Thundercats even. So for them to branch off and do figures on such an old cartoon series like that, that most many people younger people today w wouldn't even be familiar with I, I i just i don't see hasbro i don't see there enough demand for dungeons and dragon action figures for hasbro to do that i could be wrong but ever says they should do a two-pack with classic cap and classic red skull oh, that would be cool I know a lot of people have been asking for a classic red skull. I'm really I I, I love that Ultron uh, that they showed off I, with the you know the Kirby effect, which is as I understand it removable. I believe Dwight said that in the video. So I've I've never been happy with any of the Ultron figures that either Hasbro or Toy Biz did. So. I'm really uh, excited for that one. The 
Oh, snap page says the Dungeons and Dragons statues sold out quick. Well, keep in mind, though, that statues generally are made in much lower numbers because they're actually cheaper to make than action figures. So they, they're more expensive and they're generally done in smaller numbers. So, you know, just because a statue sells out doesn't mean that's going to translate to enough people buying it. You know, the action figures would have to be in ma made for Hasbro to justify doing it. Would have to be made in a much greater number than probably what those statues were produced in. So, I, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what the numbers of the statues were. I just know generally statues are often done in much smaller numbers, um, and there's less tooling and everything with statues that are involved. So the costs. I mean, statues are generally very expensive, but but they don't they don't have like you know articulated joints and stuff, which are much more difficult for you know to be made and stuff. So. And funny enough, I mean, based on my understanding of the statue market, even though statues are generally, you know, very expensive, at least the high-end ones, the amount of profit that a company makes is is not as much as you might think it is. And another thing about statues generally is that, you know, they do like one statue at a time. So if something gets backed up, like at the factory, if there's delays at the factory, which often happen, then that can really screw up a company because they're not, if, if they can't move forward with the next thing in, that they're doing because something got backed up in the factory, then, you know, they're not making money. So, I assume you see Silverhawks before D and D. Udon says, "Yeah, I mean, I think Silverhawks probably would have a little more following than than D and D figures. I mean, not, there's probably far more D and D players out there than there are Silverhawk fans. But how many of those D and D players would really be into action figures? That I I don't know. I I personally don't know because I'm not enough. I don't." dip my hand into the D&D &D scene that much so I mean there's a probably there's far more gamers out there that play those role play type games and there are action figure collectors but how many of those gamers actually translate into action figure collectors that I, I, I don't know and the fact that like that that D, D figure that they did as the PulseCon exclusive, I don't think sold out. I think it's still available, if I'm not mistaken. I won't swear to it, but I, I, I know it didn't sell out like initially, and I haven't checked recently, but I think it's actually still available. So the fact that that figure didn't sell out says to me, at least, that probably as many people, uh, there wasn't enough people buying it that, would warrant Hasbro moving forward with a lot of more D and D figures. We might see a few, but but what about Preston S? What about classic Cyclops and Angel? Well, we got classic Cyclops in that box set, that Toys R Us box set, several years ago. We definitely could use an updated classic Angel figure. And I mean, I didn't get that Cyclops figure, so I, I wouldn't mind them reissuing Cyclo a classic Cyclops. But, and I assume you mean like classic Cyclops in the solid navy blue outfit with the yellow trim and everything, not like his original X Men uniform, which they did do that box that Toys R Us box set of, with all the X Men. Blake says, classic Power Man and She-Hulk. I don't know if they would ever do a classic Power Man. I, I'm assuming you mean like with the big afro and everything from the 70s, with the 70s look. She-Hulk, you know, they were talking about in that video, you know, seemed like they were maybe hinting at doing, you know, a green version of the recent She-Hulk figure they did. So I definitely, I, I don't have any intel on that, but I definitely could see them doing a green at least I don't think I have any. I'd have to go back and check. But they definitely, based on what they were hinting at in Friday's panel, it seems like there's a good bet we get a green She-Hulk repaint of the one that they recently did. 
Mimic. Yeah, I, w- I would love to see a classic Mimic. That would be an awesome figure. Or Super Adaptoid. That That's another one that I would think would make an awesome figure. Sweet Christmas. <laughs> Damien saying Gravit Graviton. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing him either, like a classic version. Not a, not an agents of shield. <laughs> Z2K, did Hasbro say anything about new accessories for Marvel Legend figures? Uh, you, I mean, you probably need to be a little more specific, because... They certainly showed off accessories with the, like the X-Men and stuff like that, but I don't know what you mean by new and which specific figures you're talking about. Oh, Snap Page says he's going to use the new Xavier as a classic Havoc. Yeah, you could. I could see you doing a custom of, you know, to classic Havoc. You'd, you'd have to come up with the head sculpt. But the body, I think, would definitely uh, work well for that. I could even see Hasbro doing that maybe down the road. Classic action figure. The G.I. Joe Retro Collection should be expanded to the to other retailers yeah i mean it's hard to say i don't honestly know if there's enough demand for for i mean because i mean if you think about it at least so far all those retro figures that they're doing, you know, they're, they've got slight modifications, but like, I think a lot of people would be kind of like me where I'm like, I'm happy enough with the ones that I already have from like the 25th anniversary line or the, you know, recent ones that they did before they ended the line the last time. So unless they start doing new characters that they haven't really done in the past 10 years, I just don't know if there's enough demand for it i won't say there's not but 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 i have i would have to question if there's really enough demand for 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 the retro joe figures to to head to mass retail you know being available everywhere now if if like the snake eyes movie when it finally comes out ends up being like a success I think that will open the door to a lot more G.I. Joe. So I think a lot will hinge on how that Snake Eyes movie does for Hasbro um, when it comes to Joe and, and such. I, I think the classified line has been pretty much a hit, in fact, more so than what they were expecting, which is why we're seeing such kind of a drought of new product and, and stuff for that line, because they really weren't prepared. So I, I do think regardless of snake eyes and how that movie does, I think we'll continue to see more classified figures. But the problem with even that is while the, I think there's a lot of collector demand for the classified figures, it's that doesn't mean that Walmart and target are going to be too keen on carrying those figures, which are they're barely carrying now. That's why you don't see them. It's not as much that how much that they're selling so fast. It's that the retailers just are not stocking them in, in super large numbers. So what little inventory that they're getting end up selling out very quick. So it seems like there's a lot of demand, but my guess is if the stores really stock those figures in, in decent numbers, they probably would uh, start warming the shelves very much like you've been seeing with those Ghostbuster figures, those plasma Ghostbuster figures. So again, there's definitely f- collector demand for the classified. It's one, I think it's probably one of the hottest new lines of the year 
as far as collectors go, but that doesn't always translate into enough demand for a big box retailer to want or be able to sell them in great numbers. So I definitely think, you know, classify will continue though. I think probably online will always be your best way of getting those figures, you know, pre-ordering them from the small retailers and stuff, because I don't think they'll ever be readily available at the mass retailers. Maybe again, maybe if the snake eyes movie does really well and, you know, GI Joe really, you know, starts to resonate with people of all ages, but it's just a collector line of fans who grew up on GI Joe in the eighties. I, I, I just don't see there being a huge presence on the mass retail shelves for GI Joe period. And I say that as a, I love GI Joe. I'm a huge GI Joe fan. So I, I certainly would love to see that. And I would love to see, I, I hope if the retro three and three quarter inch line continues, I really hope that they start branching out from just the mainstream characters that they did in the regular 25th anniversary line and start doing maybe some of the more obscure characters that they kind of like release through the collector club and stuff. You know, those are figures that I really would like them to see, you know, figures like Footloose and stuff that like I missed out on when, when it was offered at, through the Collector Club and, and stuff. So those are figures that I would love to see. Those are holes in my three and three quarter inch collection of G.I. Joe, modern G.I. Joe figures that I would love to be able to fill. You know, I, I don't really need another Cobra Commander. The Cobra Command, the last Cobra Commander that they did you know, before, you know, the last time that they were doing three and three quarter inch figures is, is, is a fantastic figure with plenty of accessories. And, you know, it's really just hard to improve upon that. So I don't need another Cobra commander. I don't need really another, you know, the lady J figure uh, and the Flint figures that I have, you know, I, I just, I don't need more of those, but they start doing some of those obscure characters that they really didn't do in the regular retail release then I definitely would start having more interest in, in the retro stuff. And same thing with vehicles. I mean, you know, let's get past the Hiss tanks. Let's get past the, the vehicles that they've released time and time again, re-released, I should say, because they're the same molds for the most part, even though they have actually done updated Hiss tanks. Um, but like the one that they've released in the retro line, that's just pretty much the same mold. I, I mean, I think it has some slight modifications to it, but it's essentially the same one that they did back in the 80s. So the one, I, f I forget under which specific G.I. Joe line they did it in, but the one that had like, was kind of like, you could put figures in the back of it, more than one figure in the back of it, that they did uh, maybe five, six, seven years ago. Completely different sculpt from the original one, but that one was like probably the coolest his tank that they'd done. So if they start doing things like that with Joe, again, I would be more interested than just them re-releasing the same vehicles over and over and over again with only slight modifications. The guy says we need a watcher and a beyonder. I definitely would love to see a watcher. I mean, I have the Marvel Select one, which is a solid figure. Beyonder, white jumpsuit, eighty, white eighties jumpsuit, and and perm. <laughs> It'd be an interesting one to see, but I don't know how much demand there really would be for for a Beyonder figure. But if they did Beyonder, I think it would need to be done as like a re, you know using a lot of retooling from other figures and then probably offered as some kind of of store exclusive that's the only way i see them i don't see beyonder being done in a general release line wave pgm says from what i understand the big box retailers demanded one of duke snake eyes cobra commander Destro Storm Shadow in every wave. That's I I mean I haven't followed the retro line that closely, but that is generally what ends up happening with the mass retailer lines. They want those 
mainstream characters. They're going to want a Snake Eyes figure in every wave. They're going to want, you know, the... And same thing with, I mean, that's why you do see a lot of Batman, I mean, grant, with McFarlane. I mean, granted, I think McFarlane maybe has gone a little overboard on Batman, but but definitely I think there is, you know, the retailers want to see Batman um, more than they want to see some obscure DC character that, that people don't know nearly as well. So, yes, when, when the lines go to big box retailers, there's definitely going to be a push for the mainstream characters to show up over and over again. And I don't understand it because, you know, I don't know, even kids, how many different Spider-Mans does one really need? But that that has been a line of thinking in, in the toy industry, and I don't see it changing really ever. <laughs> and I mean, my guess is there is probably sales data to back that up. I don't think it's just somebody blindly saying, oh, we've got to have these mainstream characters. For whatever, I mean, you know, unfortunately those mainstream characters probably do outsell any of the more obscure ones. Any potential for vintage Fantastic Four wave? I'm not sure what you mean by, if you mean like a retro Fantastic Four wave, like on the retro card backs, then I would say, yes, very good possibility. Coco says they just want to see money. That is true. But honestly, I mean, they're a business. So most businesses do want to see money. So, um, what do you think of Marvel Legend waves being released by retailers despite being a general release? Not sure I understand that one. Oh, Snap Page says he'd love to see an anime Ghostbusters line. I, I, I don't think you're alone. I mean, I see. I, I'm personally not a huge Ghostbuster action figure collector, but I, I see you know people Ghostbuster fans all the time saying, "I want to see animated series figures based on the cartoon." And I'm sure Hasbro's got to be aware of that. But again, I think part of the holdup with Ghostbusters is because of, uh, you know, the only reason, and this is just my own personal feeling, but the only reason why Hasbro picked up that license is because of the move, the new movie coming out. And because the new movie has been delayed, that's pretty much delayed everything. So with no movie backing up the Ghostbusters line, it's much harder for Hasbro to get anything out at retail. And as we can see with that first wave of plasma figures, which I don't know about you guys, but every store I go to around here, those figures just sit there. So they're not, they don't seem to be moving well. And without a movie out there to back that property up, I just don't see Hasbro doing much with it. And if the movie bombs, my guess is Hasbro will drop that license very quickly. If the movie is a success, meaning there will be a second movie and so on and so forth, then I think you'll continue to see more and probably at some point we'll see animated Ghostbuster figures. But I don't really think we're going to see much more from Ghostbusters until the movie comes out. We'll then see some movie product to come out along with that. And then if the movie does well and that product sells halfway decently, then we'll probably see more Ghostbuster stuff. And the same with I think that pretty much says the same for GI Joe as well, and and a lot of these lines, you know, if there's not a movie or something, a Netflix cartoon series or something backing it up, you're just not going to see a huge push from from the toy manufacturers for them. Jay Blue says Ghostbusters peg warmers. The trailer is not impressive. I I mean, we've only seen essentially the teaser trailer, so I don't know. It's hard to say from what we've seen so far. But again, you know, the movie being delayed has uh, I'm sure thrown a real wrench in in Hasbro's plans for that line. Brandon B says he's hoping for a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles last. Uh, Ronin figure based on the IDW comic book series. Uh, you know, 
I mean, NECA's hinted that they might be start doing comic book series figures at some point. So, granted, it'll be NECA, which would be hard. Means probably. Well, actually, if I remember correctly, Randy, when he hinted about comic book figures, suggested they would probably be e tailor exclusives, so, meaning sold online, like the the game game figures. So, actually, those probably wouldn't be hard to get. All right, guys, we're, we're, I was planning on really keeping this to about an hour or an hour and a half. So I think we're going to call it a wraps for the day. But I do have some reviews coming up this week, which I hope you guys check out. Monday, we, I, we should be getting some Marvel Legend reveals, some more Marvel Legend reveals. Uh, it's the first Monday of the month. So, and if what is revealed is what, I'm expecting. I think it'll be some cool reveal. It's, it's again based on my understanding. It's it's more than one thing, so more than one figure. Now it's not a live stream. This will be you know essentially the figures will go up for pre-order around I think noon on Monday, noon Eastern time, and images will come out at that point. And but if it's what I'm expecting, then I think it'll be something cool. So if 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 that happens as as I expect it, I'll probably will do a news video on Monday afternoon talking about that stuff and anything else that that's happened between that happens between now and then. So, um, but then like I said, I got some more Transformer reviews. I'm going to review this uh, toy box uh, toy box uh, Iron Man Hall of Armor set. So, and. We'll probably try and get another live stream up maybe uh, in the middle of the week or, or towards the end of next week. So um, thanks again for everybody who tuned in. Thank you, Blake, for the very generous donation. Thanks to everybody who made a, a, a Super Chat donation today. Uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, just for watching. And, you know, please stay safe out there and uh, keep on collecting. And until next time. Me and Salome will catch you guys later. Yeah, Salome is still here. <laughs>